Over the 40 years that I've been a professional psychic, I've also engaged people in seeing, being able to see with the third eye. And this is a kind of introduction as to how that's done. First of all, you have to accept the idea that there is a third eye. And that eye is the eye that occupies your spirit or your soul. Now, assuming that our soul or our spirit is inside of our body, that, that kind of third eye would be located in our forehead. And the idea is to get these eyes, your naked eyes, to relax and kind of step aside so that your third eye can actually reach down or drift down and look out the naked eyes. And then thereby you're seeing with third eye perception. So you're no longer looking with the naked eye, you're actually using the naked eyes as portals for the third eye to look out and thereby now you see the astral realm. You see the world that is beyond the world, the world within the world, the other dimension, the other side. Now one way to produce this is through the exercise of face gazing because this is where, you, where two people can be looking at each other um, by getting in touch with that eye, accompanied by proper breathing, you can actually see energies morph on a person's face. Over the years that I've done this, I've had people who have no idea what I'm talking about actually sit beside me and within five minutes see me morph to where they, they don't understand what they're looking at. I have morphed in people's eyes into women, old men, angels, even animals because the, the astral realm occupies the morphing of all kinds of spirits and entities. Past lives can come out of the face. As much as loved ones can move into our energy field and actually materialize in front of the body and look back at the observer. Now, um, we're, what we're going to be doing is demonstrating how that's done because it's an idea of, of what, what the procedure is is to be able to look at one eye but be aware in your peripheral vision of the entire face and to kind of think that your breath is inducing you into a hypnotic state. So what you want to do is you almost want to close your mouth. You want to close your mouth and you want to just breathe through your nose very lightly just so that you're understanding that as you're breathing through your nose you're kind of sucking in the environment. And then, instead of vi visualizing your breath going down here, you have to kind of visualize that the breath is a vapor going up to the third eye. So when you're breathing in with your nose, you're almost visualizing that breath getting into your brain. And what it's doing is it's opening up the third eye, like a blossom, like a flower does when the sun comes out. The breath coming into the nostril goes up into the circuit where the third eye is and it starts to spin and open up. When you exhale, then you're imagining that energy looking out the naked eye and now you've got this rhythm of breathing in and out and doing this, this kind of maneuver and thinking simultaneously to where there's suddenly a morphing. And I guarantee you there are morphings because I've had people, doctors, professional people, have experienced this and cannot give it any kind of explanation other than a hallucination of some sort. So what I'm going to do with Jason is we're going to look at each other and and actually use our breath as a, as a, as a, we're going to start to regulate our breathing. So I'm going to look into one eye. Look at one eye with both our eyes. Pick one out. One eye. And then breathe in. Imagine like this energy going up to my third eye and illuminating illuminating and trying to feel like you're trying to transfix yourself. You're like you're almost trying to hypnotize yourself as you're staring at me. You always get this sort of like wolfman thing going on. Mm. 
Like there's some kind of morphing occurring? Yeah, you, you going in and out, I'm still going to get there. It, sometimes it takes a little work. What, what the experience will be is sometimes what happens is the world starts to get dark. It starts to fade. Because the naked eye is, even though your eyes are opening, a lot of people at the beginning who are, who are new at this will experience a dark darkness while their eyes are opened. And that is because your naked eye is starting to release its hold on the world. And as your naked eye releases its hold on the world, the physical world starts to disappear. That means that the third eye is starting to settle into place. Now when that process occurs, there's usually light. So people will say at that moment, well, you went dark and fuzzy. I didn't see anything. Then suddenly I saw like a light or an aura or a gleam of something coming out of your face. One thing may be accented. People will say sometimes, I just saw one big eye. That's all I saw. Or I just saw a glow around you. Now that's the beginning stages of the third eye opening up and adjusting itself with the astral realm. Yeah, because you went, your face went dark everywhere except right around the eye here and then that's sort of like you have this, uh, the best way to describe it, it's almost like wolfmanish kind of appearance, not anything to be afraid. I mean, I guess if you looked at the picture and you saw it at night or something, it might scare you, but it wasn't anything to be afraid of. Like, nothing. I mean, but you did definitely 100%. Deeper in the vocabulary of face gazing and third eye sight, one can see spirits. Spirits may take on the likeness of animals because there are animal spirits in the outer realm. And those animal spirits can manifest in the human face. So there are entities out there that can resemble animals, birds, cats, dogs, wolves, it doesn't matter. Any animal can be, can manifest itself in the human face, uh, assuming that that may be part of the, an entity out there or part of a past life connotation. Um, a, a lot of cultures will utilize masks and take on the likeness of a figure or a form or an animal. Now, when, when, when Jason's looking at me and he sees me morphing into a wolf, and I assure you, we haven't taken any drugs here, but it's almost like we're hallucinating on drugs. It, what, what that effect is could be part of a past life. Or it could be something that he's connecting to in terms of his animal spirit symbol, which, which could be a, a canine or a dog or a wolf. Yeah, everything else sort of like went dark, like around, like what you said. Now, what Jason just explained is that he's, he's really what he's looking at is the inner light of my energy. So you can imagine, you must have thought or heard about we have an inner light or that inner energy. That inner light is really the manifestation of our spirit shining. It's shining all the time. And how it shines determines how it also vibrates. When the spirit is very intense, when we're very mystical, or when we're very spiritual human beings in, in active living, that energy permeates through the skin. So just as the third eye can permeate into the astral realm, the astral body can permeate out of the physical body and manifest as light. So he's actually seeing my inner light. That's what you're actually doing. Exactly. Well, that's, yeah.